Hunter is vitally important in making racing sustainable. Owners, trainers and breeders should be driving their betting into official pools such as Interbet's upgraded tote platform as that contribution helps keep the whole show on the go. Stronger tote pools will boost the stakes pot and make it more attractive to own and breed racehorses. It's a virtuous cycle. Interbet makes deposits available instantly. Interbet offers great customer care with same day payouts. Our clients can watch all racing live via high quality streaming. Live betting is offered on many sports from all around the world. Mike, thank you very much for this opportunity to chat to you about this very special day for Mary Slack and her team. We start off with Harlequin Jack, first timer, along with Mount Pleasant. Very interesting pedigrees. Yeah, I'd say Harlequin Jack wants a little further, um, given his female line, and he wants to go around the turn. Uh, the other horse is pretty speedy, showing us good work. Um, uh, he hasn't been massively pressured at home, but I'd, I like. I, he's, a, he's a kind of horse I, I like what I see. It's, it's obviously a little bit of a puzzle for punters with the, a lot of first timers in the first leg of the PA. So, can you take a chance with one of your horses, particularly the uh, Mount Pleasant? Andrew, yeah, um, quite extraordinary that a maiden juvenile place is actually in the PA, um, given there's a pinnacle that's race ten. But anyway. Um, I would definitely put him in. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, he's a first timer. Would, would put him and uh, maybe you know who, who's ever favourite or uh, one of the horses with a bit of form, because uh, you never know with a first timer. And this is why I find uh, race three so strange being a maiden juvenile plate. First leg of the place accumulator. It looks like sort of an each way chance with Slalom Queen. Yeah, the filly's been doing well. The form's good. She should be competitive. Yeah, Andy, um, really smart little horse, actually, believe it or not. Um, the fact that he's still a maiden to me is really unbelievable. He's, he's such an awesome little horse to train. Like, really, he's like a stable favourite. At times, he's bumped horses that are better than maidens in a maiden. And he's had one or two average rides in, in his career. So they ended up splitting the field. And I see the three highest rated horses end up in the same race. And... There's an 87 merit rating horse in our race, which you don't often get um, coming with very good two-year-old form. So I don't know how fit the horse is, uh, Mr. Terry's horse, but our horse is really not, he's in a very good space. He's done a lot of work. Um, he's got a nice draw and he's probably my best chance of a winner on the weekend. Um, if it was any normal maiden plate, I would have said he's a type horse that can't lose. But like I said, once again, it looks like we bumped one or two that should have been out of maidens in the past already. You start off in the first leg of the pick six with Secret Glider, Quite a lot in his favour. Look, Andy, he's only had the couple of starts. Um, he ran third in a work riders uh, uh, last time out at the Val. Um, I think the distance should be right this time, a mile. And well drawn. You know, he, he's, I think he's got an obvious chance, so he must be included. First leg of the pick six, we've got uh, Immeasurable and Sunray. Yeah, Sunray may just need this experience. Uh, immeasurable... We've always thought he's a decent horse, but he somehow has uh, managed to, to let us down. He's coming back after gelding. He's had a few issues, and we're hoping that he can uh, be competitive. It is what it is. Uh, there's no point in throwing a tantrum who runs in the fourth, first leg of the pick six. Yeah, average horse. Um, he ran all right first up, but it was a work rider's plate. Sometimes that form's a little weak. Yeah, as I say, you know, in a big perm, put him in. Then just the sole entrant in race number five, take the world. I take the world, he's um, been doing well. If this mile's not coming too soon, he should be competitive. Onika Montana, first leg of the jackpot. Yeah, he's got reasonable form. Um, he's, he's slightly limited. Uh, again, a horse I wouldn't leave out. Uh, not the greatest mover, um, but certainly, you know, capable of winning a maiden one day. Okay, we were chatting off camera about Vetri Vell, professional maiden. Um, there or thereabouts? I would imagine so. You know, he's the the horses are all pretty fit. Uh, you know, we've had plenty of time to get them ready, so no excuses in that department. Um, I'd be comfortable that he w he would run a decent race. I don't know if he can win it, but uh, 
once again, I think you've got to include him. You know, he, he's had a couple of very, very good runs, fresh especially. So uh, he, he'd be, you know, he'd be in with a small chance. Return flight. When we last had a look at her gallop at uh, Rikies when you were about to start racing, she was absolutely flying. Are you happy with the prep into this race, Sean? Yeah, we were coming back in a 2000. I mean, that was the Gerald Rosenberg that we were prepping for. Now that's that's gone. So we are we're prepping for a mile, and hopefully um, she gives a good account of herself. It will tell us which way to go from here. But she's doing pretty well, and um, she'll be competitive. Fitting that uh, the daughter of Cherry on the top should run on such a special day for Mary. Uh, she was sort of coming out of. Well, it was early sort of autumn then and uh, you know we've now had sort of two months some cold snaps you know we're all in that same sort of boat but some like it some don't okay looks like you're in the process of having yourself a wild date over here with uh, one of the Kelmansons runners who's in a very very strong race yeah she is I mean look uh, pinnacle uh, especially pinnacle for fillies and mares usually um, a number of grade one fillies uh, use these for prep, prep runs and I imagine a lot would be using it for the Empress Club stakes, you know, at the end of the month. Um, so a very, very strong race, not a great draw, but in our favour we've got a lightweight and um, I, I think the fillies very well. She, she's got a little bit of class, she, she's won well over a mile before. Um, last time in the Oaks trial she overraced completely, plus we were horribly out of form, so, uh, you know, put a line through that, that run. I, I think she would be competitive in a competitive race. One of South Africa's most valued sponsors is Wilkobus Drift, and it is their race where some are putting has it to lose, and you have Keep Smiling and the very talented Victoria Page to take her on. Yes, not ideal to go straight into a 24.50 without a run under the belt. These fillies are both pretty well. Um, obviously, summer pudding looks hard to beat, but our fillies are, are fit and well, and we'll be giving it our best shot. Do you have a slight leaning in any way? Uh, uh, Victoria Page, um, is, is, I think, has more talent, but she's a tricky customer. She's got a trifecta or quartet chance. Uh, disappointing last time, quite sticky. I don't know what it was. She just ran a shocking race, didn't run on. Um, but uh, The so stable companion won the race, is that right? Uh, Fairuz, yes. So um, I draw a line through that. She's better than that. You know, the take the Chitengo... Form line. Um, I, I think she's a place runner on that. Summer pudding. Obviously, she was absolutely popping out of her skin. She was ready for the Oaks, and of course, we didn't race. Mr. Ferraris was telling me that she galloped hard with Gavin Lorena, her new pilot, on Saturday. Very happy with that work, and she's put in some good work as well this morning with uh, Sam Messiah. Yes, she was popping for the uh, for the first time when they when when, when we weren't allowed to race. But uh, she is well, we've got no excuses. She's doing her best, she's eating well, she looks bright, she's lovely and sound and uh, may the best horse win on Saturday and I'm confident. Yeah, I guess at the end of the day there's a brilliant old expression that says if it works, don't fix it. And Mr. Ferraris already won the triple tiara with her auntie and of course that must speak volumes for his ability to be part of your team. Yes, he's here every day guiding us and uh, helping us to win an Oaks because he's won so many Oaks and Derbies. He, he, he knows the recipe and uh, let's hope we could follow up with this filly. And then of course we move on to probably the highlight of the day for you with the big boy Hawam, Socrat with Queen Supreme. You wouldn't want a stronger hand than that, or you couldn't have a stronger hand than that, I would think. Yeah, Andrew, um, you know, they're all coming off spells. Uh, you know, prior to the to the COVID, they were all given a, a rest anyway. Uh, Socrates actually went off to the farm. Um, Hawaiian was just brought home and, and cracked on with his not a horse I chance at home on, on a farm. And Queen Supreme was given a bit of a break, you know, after all going very flat in Cape Town. So they're all fresh, well, they've had great preps. Uh, they're they're as you know, they're as fit as I can have them without having a race. Well, we've had this discussion very briefly with Matthew about how warm. If, if they went in flat in Cape Town like Queen Supreme did and Socrates did, then Hawam ran an incredible race if that was flat. 
you know, you couldn't put a finger on it. I mean, I, I just, it's that sort of travelling syndrome, getting down there, new place. Um, you know, they've got to build up resistance to whatever bugs are in Cape Town. Um, they're out of their comfort zone in terms of training and track and whatever. Just one of those things happens. So Rollo has really turned the corner in no uncertain terms. We know at his best he's capable of matching it with the very best grade one horses around. He has Tyrrell Del Fugo and Tilbury Ford to accompany him in the horse chestnut. Yeah, so Rollo is doing well. Uh, he, he's, he's not out of it, uh, even though uh, we've got healthy respect, obviously, for Michael Scupling, uh, that two top horses. But Cirillo's in a good space and um, he should be competitive. Tierra Del Figo has been coming along nicely and um, it almost looked like the 1400 is getting a bit sharp so it's possible that he steps up over the mile and um, Tilbury fought, you know, nice to have Lyle aboard again, hasn't, he hasn't uh, sat on him I think since since uh, Summer Cup or maybe one run after that but yeah we'll be looking for him to be running on as he normally does, there's still ch a Champions Day in Joburg. And even though 1450 is his penchant we know he's very effective over the mile and with Piers' style of riding, has to be a big runner. Yeah, well, I think you pretty much summed up my feelings, Andy. He, uh, you know, the little horse, well, he'll always give you his best. He is very well. His work's been very strong, um, but in a very, very strong race. So, uh, it, you know, it's a grade one and not for any uh, small reason. I think it's a power-packed field. Great draw, which is in our favour, so hopefully we can just sit in the middle of the field and, uh, you know, obviously 1,600, absolute ceiling of his, and I, I think you've got to save him for literally a, a last gasp sort of dash to the line. You know, he, he beat a field similar to this in the Hawaii Stakes last year, um, but 1,400, I think, is probably you know, a little bit more effective. Look, you know, let's be realistic. We're not expecting to win it, but we'd like to see the boy run a good race. <laughs> Onto the derby, you've got all of Cornish Pomodoro, Nabra, who's got it all to do at the weights, and of course, Shango, who's probably the, the pick on paper. Yeah, I'm glad you said the pick on paper, because at home he doesn't do too much. Um, yeah, we're hoping that he sees out this trip. Uh, he's shown us in the past that he's looking for, looking for the trip, but he doesn't, he doesn't give a lot away at home, um, even though his, his last gallop was, was a step up. Um, Cornish Pomodoro put a line through his last run. He's way better than that. Um, his run before that uh, was really encouraging to, to a useful horse of Robbie Sage. And then uh, Nabras, even though he's way out at the weights, he's, he's in a very good place. Um, he ran second in the Derby trial, and I think he's going to step up again. An exceptionally bright future, and this is the kind of trip that Leopold clearly has been looking for. Yeah, um, Andy, I, I wasn't, before the 1800, I wasn't 100% convinced about the 18. Um, I thought at some stage um, a miler, just because of the way he's built, he's a very heavy set horse and um, he's built like a 1400 miler, but then he finished the classic off really strongly and ever since then, everybody who's ridden him said to me, you'll definitely go derby trip. So, um, yeah, I don't train, I'm a bit soft on horses at times, especially young horses that I think has got ability and Leopold is a really, really good doer at home. Um, I've done more with him than I've probably done with any other horse um, in my yard over the last 10 weeks and yet he just, every week when I weighed him he was a kilo or two kilograms heavier. Some horses are obviously a much lighter frame and take a lot less work. Leopold does take a lot of work so it's not, not ideal for us um, on Saturday. Luckily we did the draws again and we got a decent draw. We ended up being drawn 13 in the last noms. Um, so yeah, being drawn four, four, we can probably ride him patiently and, and let him run on. But regardless of what happens, I SMS the guys early in the week off his final gallop. I said, guys, we've got a proper horse in our hands here. Um, if he doesn't win a big race very soon, um, he's definitely going to be a hell of a four-year-old. <laughs> And then a nice horse, uh, a horse by Flower Alley called Alibi Guy, who's shown some good metal. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, he's been impressive in his, in his three starts. He's a horse I've always rated. Um, we've gelded him since. He's had a few niggles. He's over all of that now. Um, I wished I could have had a run or two under the belt to have gone into the derby because I felt he, he deserved his place there. But uh, nearly a year off into a derby, 2 four fifty at Turfentine. It could hurt us, you know, and I just decided at their death to, to have a crack at, uh, 
at the 2,000 rather than the 2,450. You know, plus he's a horse if he comes in the July with the right weight. You know, he must have a chance uh, if we can get him to that sort of peak uh, of fitness at that time. And, you know, if I look at this derby, he could conceivably run fifth or sixth there, uh, earn buttons and get a penalty. Um, I'm not prepared to take that chance. He hasn't got the worst form and he's an older horse with, a, with, with, a, with quite a, you know, a nice handy galloping weight. Again, I wouldn't leave him out of anything. Yeah, um, Alibon, he's, uh, look, he's approaching the end of his career. So we're, you know, we're kind of seeing if the zest is still there. Certainly at work it, it is, and, he, and he do, he's done some great work at home uh, to the point where we I actually persuaded the owners just to let's give it a, another little try. So um, I, I'm thinking he'll probably go quite well. Um, you know, Gav asked to ride him, which is, I think, uh, you know, bears testament to, to the work he was doing. Uh, Sunshine Silk, very versatile filly. She's won, well, from 18 to 3-2. So I don't think the 2,000 holds any, any particular uh, poses for her. 2,000 metres, stand side track, uh, probably a nice way for her to start again. She's very fit and... Uh, you know, if we can have her in touch, sort of, well, not in touch, midfield, um, just biding her time, she's got a terrific turn of foot. And I think off that low weight, she, she's, she's going to come flying. Um, definite inclusion for the pick six. Shenanigans, amongst other things, other sculpts in his book, um, he won a very good race in the Vodacom Durban July Consolation on that big day. And he's a high-class individual in his own right. Yes, I think with his, his pedigree, we, we took our time in gelding, which was obviously a mistake and to geld as a six-year-old is not ideal but um, he's taken it well he's had a few runs under the belt and I think he's going to start coming to the party over the, the staying races and finally Divine Odyssey what you see is what you get we know that he's he's brimful of talent but quirky on the odd occasion yeah listen he's always had a bit of um, attitude I think it comes from her mother's side because his sister was complete stone dilly the first fall um, but yeah, he's had a he's had a really good prep, also a bit soft. Um, obviously, we got bigger things late in Durban for the season, but a little bit of setback. Um, Sunday morning, he came back and he was a bit lame and after work, and um, we felt his feet and his one foot was boiling hot. And Monday morning, we had to cut a little abscess out on his hoof. So he had um, well, we didn't do much with him Monday, and obviously we didn't do much with him today. And the farrier came to to get some pad on him this morning. We um, so we're going to try to get him for a little trot this afternoon and see if we can get uh, one or two canters into Saturday. But not the ideal last week uh, before race, but in saying all of that, he's a prep run. So I'm just hoping we can get him to the course fairly sound and, and get run out the way. I see that you've, you've made a declaration that if he doesn't come up sound that you're going to race him with a wooden leg. Is that true? Um, and if you know somebody who can make me a nice one, we can try it. <laughs>The reason that I got involved with Interbet is purely for one reason. It is the only platform in the industry that doesn't lay the open bet. And I think it's so important to encourage all punters and especially clients of mine that, that like to play the tote bets to play through Interbet because they are the only platform that puts it back into the tote pools. And at the end of the day, tote pools are what generate our turnover and our stakes for our resources. And then the day itself, obviously, there'll be no crowds to see the fair, but we all know that statistics tell us that a huge amount of turnover is done off course. We live in a modern age. The international market will be watching. And so I'm sure Mary and her team that have worked so hard and waited so long and so patiently will be satisfied with the end result. Yeah, you know, Andrew, I think there's no more understanding person in this uh, industry than Mary. Uh, and Jess and uh, you know so um, I mean they'll just be grateful that we that we're going ahead and racing and that they have a filly that uh, looks like it, it, it's got a chance of getting a triple crown under the belt which will be quite fitting and you know one would would only wish that um, you know that it happens for them on the day. Andrew at the end of the day the MOD mandate here is to take care uh, of jobs to take care of the previously disadvantaged and to deal them in. There is no way I believe MOD would have got involved had that not been that in the survival of this industry, first and foremost. But I can tell you right now that uh, Mary and Jess's mandate to us is save jobs. This must be such a special day for Mary Oppenheimer and daughters for what they have done for the salvation of the sport. 
Uh, Andrew, you know, we, we can't thank them enough and uh, a lot has been spoken, but uh, from a personal point of view, Mary, Jessica, just thank you so much. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible what you've done. It, it's so generous and, uh, well, you, couldn't, you deserve to be rewarded with a triple tiara winner and I, I wish you all the best.